sideline. Gets a block down the sideline. And sold. Touchdown. Colorado upset 13 Colorado ranked Penn State. Penn State. Penn State. Center left foot shot off the post. Taking on the line. Go for the Buffaloes. Seven blitz. Coming. Oh. Speed in trouble. The ball's loose. Scooped up by Colorado. And a big man running all the way in. to play the ball game. There's a handoff, Joe Williams. He runs into Rick Gamboa off the right-hand side. Ball is fumbled. Picked up by Kenneth Olabode. And he runs it in from the six. Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! The defense comes up big again. Well, the improbable has become a reality as the rise continues here at Folsom Field. The Buffaloes wrap up the regular season as they knock off number 22, Utah, 25-22. to They secure the Pac-12 South Championship. They're 10-2 in the season, 8-1 in Pac-12 conference play. Back here in the Stampede, Gary Barnett and Mark Johnson. I'm still not sure how it's happened, but here we stand. The Buffaloes are on their way to Santa Clara for the Pac-12 title game next week. Mark, it's, it's just a bunch of guys, <clears throat> coaches and players, that made a decision that things were going to change, and they, they were led by uh, a warrior, Sefo Lufau, along with some coaches, and uh, you, you know what? It's just one of those stories that works, and it, it works here. And you know, I, I listened to the players come out, and, and they were saying, "Boy, there were so many fans here." And, and <laughs> Derek Swanson says, "You know, it used to be like this all the time." So, and and that's what it is like when you're on a roll and you're playing like this. This place is rocking, and uh, there's no greater place to play. And you know, these guys deserved every person that showed up. Yep. And <clears throat> you know they. They, uh, they played a really tough team. This team, uh, you know, they beat SC. They lost by six to Washington, or seven. Uh, they've beaten every other Pac-12 South teams. Yep. This is a good football team. And um, we didn't bring our best game on offense. We did on defense, but we didn't bring our best game on offense. And somehow we found a way to scratch and claw and win a really tough football game. Yeah, by the way, that crowd here tonight, the first official sellout at Folsom Field since Texas came in here during the big 12 days, the Tech and the Buffaloes, uh, back in 2008. So it's been a while since we've had a sellout here, eight years in fact, at Folsom Field. That defense you talk about, I I'm not even sure I, I can come up with superlatives anymore to talk about it. It was phenomenal. They got the scoop and the score, the strip by Moeller and Gamboa, picked up by Olabode. That made it 27 uh, to, to 16, I guess, at that point in time and kind of sealed this victory. But Gary, that, that defense just continues to make plays time after time after time. Well, we said in the keys of victory that if this defense is just do what they do, and the way they do it, and I'll be darned, they held them to exactly 30% conversion yep. on third down. They got more sacks than uh, did the number one sack team in the conference. They got more tackles for a loss than the number one tackle for a loss team. Uh, they got two interceptions off a team that had thrown the fewest interceptions all year. So they just did what they do, and they, they just sort of smother you. They don't do it fancy. They just smother you. Those three big guys just fill gaps. Linebackers run around, and then the secondary, you, I'll tell you, that's how you win yeah. championships is to have a secondary that plays like this secondary. When you're good in the back end, you can make a lot of things go the other way for you. Tedrick Thompson had two more interceptions ball game. In fact, had a chance at a third one, couldn't hold on to it. He's got seven on the season. That ties the Colorado record. Dick Anderson, Cullen Bryant. You're talking about some pretty rarefied air when you get your name over those two fellas. Well, and, and they they uh, they played in a time when they weren't throwing the ball 60 times <laughs> That's a true. game. You know, That's and, true. And they weren't playing 12 games. So, uh, you know, he's had a great year, but he's he's had a lot of help too. Those other those other three corners and and uh, Laguda have helped him a lot. And you know, the guy that was Player of the Week didn't even play this week. That's right, player Nick of the Week Fisher. from last week, Nick, Nick Fisher didn't even get in the game except on special teams. So um, that's depth in in, in that secondary. But uh, Jim Levitt and Mike McIntyre and all the assistant defensive coaches have put together a defense that I don't think any of us thought was possible. I thought we'd be better, but I didn't see this coming at all. So the Buffaloes are out of the Pac-12 title game next week against the University of Washington, a team that, by the way, dismantled on Friday night their rival, Washington State, in the Apple Cup. That's a pretty good football team the Buffs are going to see in Santa Clara. Well, that's as solid a team as I've seen. You know, uh, I, it's hard to believe SC beat those guys if they played the way they played uh, the other day. And, 
uh, or yesterday. And I know that's a big game for them, and they get up. But uh, uh, they were defensively, they were solid. Special teams, they were really good. And offensively, quarterback's a great player, and they got a couple great playmakers. So we're going to have our hands full. But you know, you know, it's supposed to be hard when you get there. Yeah. I don't think I'm betting against the Buffaloes. No, I wouldn't bet. <laughs> Not this year. You know, if the Cubs can win and, and all the other things that have Raiders happened. Raiders were good yeah, and craziness, yeah. Yeah, an election. <laughs> Who knows? Buffs it's, could be there. It is like bizarro world in the sports world and the Buffaloes after a 10-year drought. And believe me, Buff Nation, you know what I'm talking about. We suffered together for a long time. But the Buffaloes are into the Pac-12 title game. They're South champions. By the way, our coverage on Saturday, make it Friday afternoon in Santa Clara, gets underway at 5 o'clock on the Colorado Football Network. The kickoff between the Buffs and the Huskies at 7 o'clock. For Gary Barnett, I'm Mark Johnson. Stay with us. We're going to continue talking about a great victory. Colorado secures the South by knocking off Utah. We're back in a moment. We said it's going to be a heavyweight fight, right, Tedrick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We said just keep punching, keep punching. Now, what you've done all year, what we said, you don't blink. You don't blink. Okay? I am so proud of the coaches. I am so proud of you guys. Okay? I can't even express it in words. Well, the celebration didn't wrap up quickly, I can tell you that, on a Saturday night as the Colorado Buffaloes wrapped up a perfect 6-0 season here at Folsom Field, Colorado. Picks up win number 10 of the season, 8-1 in the Pac-12 as the Buffs knock off number 22, Utah, 27-22, securing the Pac-12 South. Back in the Stampede, I'm Mark Johnson. Great celebration, just the eighth 10-win season for the Buffaloes in program history as they move on now to the Pac-12 title game to take out Washington on Friday in Santa Clara. And as you can imagine, it was a celebratory locker room at the Champion Center. It was awesome. The kids just kept fighting. Everybody kept playing and ball and balling as hard as they could. They're a good football team, and uh, we just found a way to keep punching and, and keep playing. I think Coach Max said his best. You know, we don't really blink. Um, we get put in bad situations. You know, we kind of we just handle it and we just go. You know, it's uh, it's kind of. We kind of like it now, you know. It's it's kind of a cool thing to us, you know. We get to go in the red zone, stop them. It's it's awesome. Uh, it feels so good. You can't put it in words. Um, we've been I'm with the guys that have been fighting for the last four or five years to to turn the program around, and we finally see daylight and see it happening. So we, we still have a long ways to go, but I'm just we're happy, and we can't put it in words right now. You know, being able to get a stop anytime is a great feeling, but definitely in a game like this where everything's real tight and real close, it's, it's just that much sweeter, you know, and being able to be a part of that defense that can do that is it's phenomenal. I mean, I feel they're the best defense in the world. That's what I feel, especially when we're having bad days and they just find ways to pick us up and stop the offense. But it's 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 a great feeling knowing that you have one of the best defenses to lean on when you're having trouble. Yeah, I felt like it was going to be a great game. Uh, it was going to take all of us and started in the trenches. That's what our main goal was, was to control the line of scrimmage, and I feel like we did a great job doing that. All, all around, it was just a great team effort and great great play on defense. Uh, and when it came down to it, we made plays where we needed. Right. I mean, that's how you win football games. Football is not always pretty. I mean, that's just the way it is. No sport is. And the teams that can uh, keep taking the punches and keep getting back up and not blinking are the ones that end up winning. And that's what we did tonight. We just kept battling and battling and never got our head down and just kept fighting. I mean, that's what that's how you win championships. Not every, There wasn't a team in the country that's played 12 great games. Yep. And uh, so we just got to keep playing, and, and that's what we our kids know how to do. I've, I've grown up a Buff, Buffs fan my whole life, and just to see the, the sense of pride that this team has instilled in this, uh, really this state, but especially this city, it's just, I, you know, it's just unreal to me. It's, it's awesome. It's kind of weird. It hasn't really hit yet. I mean, it feels great. It's uh, It's been a long time coming, I feel like. Uh, I mean, been here for four years. Good to see these seniors go out on a positive note like this. And I mean, it just, it's crazy. It's awesome. Celebrate. Don't celebrate too hard because we still got business. One of our thing is just, if the offense doesn't produce, we have to. If we don't produce, the offense has to. One has to carry the other, and if, and if, they're, and if we're going to be champs, we have to, we have to carry each other. And so we're really just working on trying to pull up, bring a complete game, having the offense produce, defense produce, and, and fix the issues on special teams so that we don't get a touchdown or those long runs like we had today. Yeah, you can always feel the energy of the fans, no matter who, who's here. But when you got a packed house like this, it's, it's pretty unbelievable to do that at your uh, your home field. And and for these seniors, I think it's a great feeling too. You know, we came in, um, and it was it, it's been a struggle. It's been a work ever ever since we got here. And so being able to have that that stadium just freaking packed, man, it's it's sweet and it's a great send off for these guys. 
we we talk we talk about turnovers and uh, game changing plays, and that's definitely what we did today. And yeah, uh, we, we like to say everybody eats, so that definitely happened today. <laughs> and we definitely wanted to go out there and get a win and show show the whole world that you know we're we're real this this year. And uh, you know we have a lot of doubters out there, but we don't pay attention to them. We we want to show them on the field that we're real. It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely exhilarating, exciting. I think when I finally get home and sit down in my house, and um, I think it really hit me. The locker room is crazy. I mean, Coach Mack just went up and started dancing to uh, the song started from the bottom. Now we're here, man. I just, <laughs> like, I can't even put into words how just unbelievably excited I am right now. Obviously, a lot of excitement around this Colorado football program as the Buffs secure the South Division Championship. They're on to the Pac-12 title game Friday in Santa Clara. Now, along with this, there's a lot of great basketball going on. Tad Bowles basketball team is on a roll as well. We'll talk more about that as we continue here in the Stampede. Colorado attack, four court left. There's a slip screen inside. Actually elevates and slams with the left hand. Oh, a little slip screen. Welcome back into Stampede. It's been a great start for the Colorado basketball team. We're talking football, which has been fantastic. Both the men's and women's teams getting votes in the top 25. In fact, the women are ranked number 21. Tad Boyle has got his Buffaloes at 5-1 and one on the season right now. So far, so good. Been a good start for your Buffs. What, what's your grade so far after six games? Well, I don't know what grade I'd give us. I'd probably give us a B. Um, I think, you know, we've done some really good things, and we there's, we're still a work in progress. It's still November, uh, believe it or not. It feels like mid-December right now, but it's, it's November. And uh, obviously, the, the first half at Notre Dame, we look back at that and wish we could have it back. But, uh, um, you know, we got a big two-week stretch coming up for this yeah. basketball program here as we, as we enter into December. But uh, I like our team. I think uh, some of our freshmen are coming along, and we've had good leadership. I think Xavier Johnson and, and Derek White have done some really nice things uh, helping lead this team in, in different different ways. So some good things and, and, uh, and areas where we definitely have to get better. I think the Wofford game on Sunday, Buffalo's won by 15 over the Terriers, improving to 5-1. and one. I, I know aesthetically it wasn't a great game to watch, but, but you had a little bit different view of that a little bit, didn't you, than just my team didn't play well next Yeah, a little bit. I think, look, I think Wofford is a team that's going to win a lot of games in their league. They've been to four NCAA tournaments, I think, in the last six or seven mm -hmm. years. I mean, it's, uh, again, they don't have as big and strong of athletes as, as maybe Colorado does, or, you know, they played LSU earlier. They were ahead of LSU at halftime. Um, so, uh, but they've got guys that can play basketball and they execute well and they're well coached. And that's what's great about Division One basketball. There's 351 teams out there, Mark, and, and there's a handful of them that you run into them on the wrong night and, you know, they can hang an L on you. We, we got out of there without that. Um, and we, I, I think, again, every opportunity that we step on the floor now, we have to take and learn something from as we move forward. G give me one thing on either side of the ledger here. One, one thing you, you think to yourself after six games, what I like about my team, and another thing that I want to see my team improve upon. I, I like our balance. I think we've got a team that on any given night, uh, scoring-wise, offensively, we can we can hurt you in different ways. And uh, so I think that's a team that's hard to prepare for. Multiple weapons. Um, you know, on the negative side or the other side of the ledger, I would say consistency. You know, that's something as a coach you're always uh, looking for. You're probably never satisfied with to, to one degree or another. But consistent effort, consistent uh, execution, uh, which uh, maybe is a little bit too much to ask in, in again this time of year, but it's something we got to continue to get better at and, and strive for. You talked about a tough stretch the Buffs have got uh, coming up here. Xavier's on a schedule at BYU. Wednesday night you've got Colorado State, yes. and that's you know obviously a rivalry and yep. uh, certainly a big ball game. Yeah, absolutely, it's a big game, and it's a big game because it's the next game. But certainly uh, the in-state rivalry, uh, we know Colorado State loves uh, to come in. They came in here two years ago into our building and won. Uh, that's something that we've got. To, the, the, the road team actually has won the last two games. Mm. And so we've got to make sure that we are ready to go. Our players will be. Hopefully our fans will be. We'll pack the building. And, and then we go to Portland on Saturday, who's got one of the better point guards on the West Coast that nobody's heard about. So a uh, big stretch for our guys. But it starts with Colorado State, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it wasn't that many years ago where the non-conference ended up hurting Colorado when it came to the tournament. How much have you focused on that in recent years, making sure the resume looks better. Well, you know, as I think about Xavier and I think about going to BYU and as, 
as much indigestion as that gives me. Uh, I also know the reason we're doing it is so you know we don't have what happened uh, six years ago when we were snubbed and left out of the tournament. We were actually the number one seed in NIT, so we were the last team actually left out of the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be there because of a soft schedule, and certainly we don't have a soft schedule. Oh, certainly not. How about defensively? How do you feel about your team there? Getting better. I think uh, you know we're we, we're making some progress and strides. Uh, you know, uh, against Notre Dame, we made an adjustment. You know, at halftime, our guys did a great job too. Actually, it was middle of the first half where we started switching screens. So we've got to be one of those teams that can play multiple uh, defenses in terms of ball screen coverages and be able to adjust. I think again, we're a work in progress there. But overall, uh, you know, I like our numbers, and uh, I think uh, we've uh, having lost one of our better defenders in Josh Scott and a really solid one in Xavier Talton. Um, I'm pretty pleased with where we are right now. I don't want to add to your suggestion, but have you been keeping tabs to the Pac-12? That's a good league you're going to jump into here shortly. Uh, very good league, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I, I follow the scores. And <laughs> what's interesting is a coach, you're always rooting for the Pac-12 teams right. uh, in November and December, and then you want to beat them up in January and February. Well, keep up the good work. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's head coach Tad Boyle here in the Buffaloes, Colorado State, then at Portland, Xavier. Big schedule coming up for the bus. We're going to take a quick time out here in the Stampede. We come back. It's good to be a buff. We're going to talk about the state of the program with Neil Welk at CUBuffs.com. Busy weekend for the Buffs, and you can follow all of it by checking out the media schedule at cubuffs.com. Women's basketball kicks it off on Wednesday against Southeastern Louisiana. The game is set to tip at noon. It'll be live streamed on cubuffs.com. The men's team will play later that night against Colorado State starting at 7 p.m. and it'll be broadcast on Pac-12 Mountain and the Colorado Basketball Network. Football heads west to play Washington in the Pac-12 championship game Friday night at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. That huge matchup will be live on Fox and the Colorado Football Network starting at 7 p.m. And finally, the women's basketball team is back at Coors Saturday at 6 p.m. to take on Idaho State. That game will be live streamed on cubuffs.com. As always, you can check out cubuffs.com for all upcoming games and where you can watch them. How about that? Stepped in front of the pass to Akator. Catch by Leonard. Layup good. The CU Buffs have upset 15th ranked. Kentucky here in Boulder, 79 to 69. Welcome back into Stampede. Well, we've been talking a lot of football and a lot of basketball. You know, it's great to be a buff, though, right now. There is victories everywhere in this athletic program. Joined by Neil Welk of cubus.com. Obviously, part of we're going to talk with, uh, by start about the, with talking about the football program and where the buffs are at right now in the Pac-12 title game. And I'm still pinching myself trying to figure out how this happened. Every, every time you say buffs in the Pac-12 title <laughs> game, ranked number nine in the nation, you have to go, yeah, that, that, this is really happening. Yeah. It's, it's been a great year. And obviously, it's been a terrific season. Mike McIntyre. Uh, Pac-12 Coach of the Year, 10-2 uh, and two season, uh, ranked number nine in the nation, eight and one in the Pac-12. You can just go down the list of all the things they've done. Uh, sold out Folsom Field for the first time in, in six or seven years. Uh, Seppo Lufau setting all kinds of records. It's just, it's just been a great year for Colorado football in, in every regard. Uh, Phenomenal. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's a record. Cepho hasn't set it. I think he's the all-time leading three-point shooter now in Colorado history. The way be. things have gone. It's crazy. If you look back in this program this season, and, and you and I both thought it was going to be a better 2016, what will stand out for you, do you think? You know, I think what will stand out is just the way everybody played. If I look back on this season, it's contributions from every place. I don't think there's one player that you can say – made the difference this year. I think there have been a half a dozen players that have made the difference. Just the way this team has played together as a team, every week it's been somebody stepping up and making plays, whether it's a Tedrick Thompson, Cheetah Bay Awuzie, Sefo Lufau, Philip Lindsay, just go down through the, the list, list of over Bodie. Yeah. It's just been great players all the way through. Yeah, been phenomenal. Now we're going to talk about other programs real quick, though. The Pac-12 title game, getting ready for this broadcast this week, and I'm looking at all the conference stats. You look at defensive stats, it's Washington, Colorado, Colorado, Washington. There's no wonder why these two were the last two standing. No, they, they, they have dominated the, the conference this year in, in both those categories. Colorado's defense, Washington's defense, number one and two in the conference, and Jim Levitt, a Broyles Award finalist for the yep. top assistant in the nation. Uh, certainly it's been a great year for both of them, and, and Colorado's offense has kind of gotten overlooked by the defense, but if you look at the changes that Darren Cheverini brought in, what Brian Lindgren had, and what they brought to the table together, it's been 
been a great year for both sides of the ball. Yeah, going to be a great game on Friday nights in Santa Clara. Let's touch on some of the other programs. How about soccer? I mean, they go to the NCAA tournament, second round, great season for Danny Sanchez. Oh, terrific, terrific season for Danny Sanchez. This was a, this was a team that uh, really, really struggled last year. They came back. Uh, they, go, they, they were leading the league for much of the year. They end up second. They go to the Pac-12. Uh, uh, they go to the NCAA tournament. They win their first round game. They have the freshman of the year in Taylor Korniak, have a great goalie, uh, just had a great year all around, and, and it's certainly another big boost for the for the program because they're going to be good again next year. How about volleyball? I know they kind of kind of slowed off or, or, or maybe tailed off towards the end of the season, but they did end with a nice top 25 victory over Utah, but uh, certainly a nice year for the volleyball team. Oh, great. I, you know, anytime you bring in a, a new coach and, and have that kind of year, I think it's a successful, successful season. Got as high as, I think, number 16 in the nation, uh, beat two top 12 teams or two top 10 teams uh, early in the year at home, and so a, a, another nice step forward for the program. And I'm not even sure if we bring it up. I mean, Mark Wetmore, death taxes in cross country here at CU. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, you know, the, again, they swept the Pac-12 championships, uh, men's and Yawn. women's. They, they, <laughs> nobody has ever won the Pac-12. No, no other team besides Colorado has ever won the men's championship in Pac-12 cross country. Six yeah. years in a row, they go and they win. Uh, women won it again this year. I think this was their third title. They go to the Nationals. Men finished sixth. Women finished third. Mark Wetmold will tell you that that was a disappointing finish. <laughs> there are 330 coaches in America that would love to have the number six men's team and number three women's team in the nation. <laughs> Quite amazing. In fact, out of 12 Pac-12 cross-country championships over six years, men's and women combined, the Buffs have won nine of them. Yes. Think about that for a second. Let's talk basketball here briefly. Tad Boyle's Buffs off to a very nice start, five and one of the season. I, you know, I, I think this is probably Tad's most talented team. It'll be interesting to see what he gets out of them. I think they have a tremendous amount of potential. I think we saw that in the win over number 22, Texas, getting a few votes for the top 25. Got some big, big games coming up, and uh, but I, I think this has promise for a great year. Speaking of the top 25, for the first time in two years, the CU women's program, the top 25, number 21. J.R. Payne comes on board. Oh, all she does is win. 6-0. Feel the pain. Feel the pain, I'm telling you. <laughs> great great yes. win for, for Colorado already over number 15, Kentucky, at home by about 10 points, uh, playing really well. 6-0, and, and, and they're just going to continue to get better. She came in, she wanted a perimeter uh, offense, and they're, they're running it very well, and she's really infused some life into the program. You know, it's always good to be a buff, but it's really good to be a buff right now. He's uh, Neil Welk of CUBuffs.com. I'm Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you from Santa Clara, California, the Buffaloes, number nine of the country, and number four, Washington, for the back to 12 title game. Our coverage on Friday gets underway at five, kickoff at seven on the Colorado Football Network. We'll talk to you next time here in the Stampede.